Let's have a look at this. Hi, so this is Mark at Skywagon University. We're doing a video on this plane today. This plane is what would happen if a big tired Husky 185 and a sweet little 170B got together. This would be their impetuous 10 year old daughter. It's a tail dragger and it looks familiar and it's got a straight tail. It's a 150. It's a 59 Cessna 150 with the straight tail and no rear window. So it looks like a mini 180. So let's have a close look at it. So a Cessna 150, everybody knows a Cessna 150 is a nose wheel plane. The 120 and the 140 that, pre, uh, that came out before this plane in the 40s, um, they had uh, a round tipped wings, they had fabric wings, they had double struts, they had little flaps, they had a little manual flap lever, the flap was this wide. So when the 150 came out, it was going to be like a 140C or a 140D and everybody said, make a nose wheel. And Cessna said, what's a nose wheel? So they made a nose wheel, they made a 150. The 150, they made 24,000 Cessna 150s and they evolved right up through till like 1977, they stopped making them. This 150 originally is a 140, it's the 140 fuselage. So when you convert the 59 with a straight tail to a tail wheel configuration, you use the 140's gear, you use the 140 tail wheel, you use the 140 bulkhead, you just take the gear out of its 150 position this panel and put the 140 gear in here where the inner support shelves already exist because it's the 140's fuselage. So what you're doing is you're making a 140 into a one, you're making a 150 back into a 140 but you get the later wing and the later wing has the large Fowler flap, 40 degree flap like on 170's, the better aileron, square tip, very conventional, looks like a lot of other planes a lot, a lot of other Cessnas. So you, when you make this 150 back into a 140 by making it into a tail drag, you get the benefit of the later wing, but you have the fun of the tail dragger and the earlier of the earlier plane. So let's have a closer look at it. So here are the flaps, these Fowler flaps, they're on all later Cessnas. So watch this, I'll put them down. 40 degree manual flaps, just like in a 180 or a 170. 10, 20, 30, 40. And we're going to fly it in a minute, so we'll see how that helps. But that is a big plus, because electric, you know, um, the slope tail 150s have electric flaps. And then back here, obviously it's got the big square tail, not like a 170 or a 140, so it's got a lot more rudder on it. So these conversions actually behave like a tail dragger should behave, whereas the slope tailed 172 and slope tailed 150 conversions um, are a little bit tail heavy and don't have a lot of rudder. This doesn't have that problem. And it's got a proper tail wheel, proper spring, all 140 bulkheads back here, springs, steerable, independent brakes, everything. It makes a very nice tail wheel plane, although it is only 96 horsepower. So talking about 96 horsepower, let's go and look at the uh, engine. So the engine is a, is a Continental 0200, 96 horsepower, four cylinder, 1800 hour TBO. This plane's got about uh, 600 hours on it. And in here, there's a few little 200 isms but some upgrades too. It's got an alternator that's been added. It's got the pull starter mechanism. Well, I'll pull it in the cockpit. When you pull this cable, this rod pushes that in and then it actuates the starter. So it's not like an electric button. It actually shoves a, 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 a mechanical linkage in and engages it. And then the sump, just like all 0200s, is a sort of football shape, American football, not soccer, oval and it holds four quarts of oil and the dipstick is this cap, it's underneath the cap. So that's the accessory area and then around the front it's just a four-cylinder air-cooled engine. And then down here where the engine mount meets, I'll take my hand out of the way, but just there there's a circle. That circle is the bottom of the engine mount where the nose wheel used to come out and the triangle at the bottom of the engine cowling is where the nose wheel would stick out. So it's the same cowling. This is the cowling that the nose wheel plane had. And then this access door, this isn't a mod, this is how they are. You just close it like this. You don't need a handy Leatherman or anything. And she's closed. Uh, the fuel tanks, fuel capacity on a 150, it's just the same as it would have been if it had been a nose wheel. Under that square, if you undid all those 
screws and lifted off that panel, you'd see a metal tank held down by two straps, which you can then disconnect and lift out, it's like a little metal tank. One per side, they have 11 and a half gallons each, so it's like 22.5 usable. One fuel position selector, there's no both, it's on or off inside, we'll see that in a minute. And it's got a raised gas cap over there, and it's still got the old cap on here because it's a vented system. And if you put two caps on it, it won't vent, and then the cap, then it will create a vacuum as it sucks out the fuel. So it has to have odd caps like that. So 23 gallons burns about six an hour, so two, three hour range. Great trainers. So here's the inside, uh, very like a Cessna 150 because it is one. You know, close, close, you know, when you're two, 200 pounders in here, you're rubbing shoulders. Um, oh, that brings me to, the, to, to some of the numbers. Um, it, useful load is 600 pounds, and 200 of roughly of that is gas. So two big guys and full fuel and one bag is about useful, uh, about max on them. Um, you, can, you can work out 23 gallons times six is the fuel. And... Not in the wing tips, not in the wing roots like some 170s and the older planes. Two fuel gauges, normal stuff, oil pressure, oil temp, mixture, throttle, carb heat, primer, starter. And we'll sh I'll show you how that works when I start the engine. You literally turn on the mags and you pull that and it engages that mechanism we saw under the cowl. And somebody's modernized this. This is like the older retro look with the overlay on it like this, but it's got all modern gyros in it. Um, you know, they're all three and a half inches, none of the big old stuff that would have been in it. Very good visibility, wraparound visibility. And then trim here, and it's a trim tab, it doesn't move the whole tail, it's just a regular little trim wheel. Fuel here, off, on. Uh, my flying instructor, when I was learning in a 150 years ago, we were flying over the desert, and his idea of fun was to creep his hand slowly down, turn the fuel off to see what you do in an, engine, in an emergency. And, and I knew it, because the other people at the flight school had said he was going to do it on your long cross country. So we're flying along, and I saw his hand creeping down, and he turned it off, and then there's like 30 seconds before it quits, 15 seconds, and it, went, and it quit. He goes, what are you going to do? And I said, turn the fuel back on. <laughs> but we did the whole, yeah, but that was amusing. Here's the flaps, 10, 20, 30, 40, very significant, and then normal, yokes, two open, two open windows, two doors, and a little stowage area behind the seats, enough for a small bag and a hat shelf. So, enough of the chat, let's go and do some tail wheeling. So, it's already running, but to get it started, it was master on, mags on, a couple of squirts of prime, obviously mixture in, and then the starter, you pull it until it engages, turns the prop, starts, push it back in, throttle. Conventional brakes, Got normal uh, rudder pedals down there like every other Cessna. Both sides too, which is good for if you're learning. Direct mechanical steering to the tail wheel. And if you want to uh, do more than that, obviously there's a brake, which will swivel it around just like anything else. Now remember this is 96 horsepower and a 185 is 300 horsepower. So this it spends more time on the ground than a lot of tail draggers do, so it's actually very good to learn in, because instead of just blasting into the air and sorting things out while you're in the air, it um, takes a bit of finesse to keep it straight. So, here we are on the run-up area. Controls. Very light. Instruments. Gas on. Efficient. Attitude, run up. So normal run up, 1700 RPM. One mag, other mag, both mag. Carb heat. And we are ready. I'll just check final. Oh, 
possible. Uh, Cessna 99 Kilo Alpha departing runway 23. Local flight possible. Smoothly to full power. And we just let her build the speed. Doing 40. Gently pull back. And she's in the air. Like it's a Tabri, like like a J3 carb, like a you know, any of these little small hill drivers, they're great fun. Not hugely powerful, but really good fun for just buzzing around hundred miles an hour. Flaps away. So it's half full of gas, and I weigh 140 pounds. Uh, I weigh like 185 pounds, and we're climbing at seven, eight hundred feet a minute out of a 2,005 foot, 500 foot elevation airport. Blasville, nine kilo alpha, left crosswind, two three at Blasville. Blasville, nine kilo alpha, left downwind, two three at Blasville. Altitude 3400 feet. There's the airport. Just throttle up back a little bit. And there's the 250% of normal snow cap in the Sierras that we've got this winter that will be the water reservoir for the summer, which is very good. Just like any other 150, once it's in the air, it doesn't matter, it's a tailwheel, it's very, very Cessna-like, very responsive, light on the controls. Very good ailerons and flaps on them. The, 150, the 140's flaps are good, ailerons are good, sorry, but the flaps are tiny on a 140. I don't need this giant gap to get back down to Placerville, I'm just going to do it wider for the, for the video. Placerville, 9 kilo alphas on left base now for 2 3 at Placerville, first off. Carb heat on. Whoa, big drop. Slow it down into the flap range, which is right there. And let's do like 30. If 40. Yeah. In my house. Placerville, 9 kilo alpha is on final for 2 3 at Placerville. I'm going to wheel land it. The runway is uh, 3,800 feet long and 2,570 feet elevation, and it drops off on all sides. It's a flat top hill. Bumpy off. I'm gonna let it slow way down, what? Oh, 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 40, yeah, 40 odd. Keep her up, keep her nice, great. Hill still up, we're barely moving. Airspeed to zero. No tail down. Go back, flaps away. Placerville, 9 kilo alpha is clear of 2-3 at Placerville. If it wasn't boring for the viewers, I'd go round and round and round in it, just for the fun of it.
It's really good fun. So we made it, landed a tail dragger. Fire breathing 96 horsepower of Cessna 150 tail wheel conversion. Um, we do these videos at Skywagon University. They're kind of more educational and more in amusement. They're not sales videos, even though I sell planes, but people have asked, what are they worth? What's it worth? This plane's 49 grand, for example. So if you like the videos, there's a subscribe link down here to subscribe and you'll get notifications. If you click on the bell, you get a ding to let you know a new video has been made. We've made two or three in the last three weeks. Sometimes there's a bit of a gap, other times they're close together. So if you like watching them, subscribe on the link and uh, we hope you enjoy them as much as we have fun making them.